morning, church. Good morning, church. I'm very grateful to Pastor Peter for allowing me to preach today. Some of you know that I've been here for 25 years. That's the history of our church. But I've never preached on Mother's Day. So I asked Pastor Peter permission to preach at this service today. So I'm greatly honored. Because in the next uh, week, I'll be in California preaching at Steve's church. And after that, we'll be going to Singapore, Malaysia, and China, where we'll be uh, ministering as well. Now, there's a, a friend of mine, he's a pastor. And um, one day, when he stepped out of his church, a man in the congregation shook his hand and says, Pastor, you are smarter than Einstein. And then he walked away. So this pastor, for the whole week, was wondering why this man said those words, smarter than Einstein. And the next week, he cornered the man. He says, now tell me exactly what do you mean. Oh, pastor, you want to know? Yes. Well, when Einstein was around, only 10 people in the world understood him. 10 people. But when you preach, no one understands you. <laughs> so today, I hope you'll understand what I'm going to say. But before that, children, hey, children, will you wave to me? I'd like to see you. Okay. Now, I want to show a um, special video of a mother. And I want you to tell me afterwards whether your mum is like that. Okay, I'll ask you. If she is, you raise your hand later on. If she's not, you can just shake your head or so just wave your arms and say, no, no, no. And mothers too, you can see whether you can identify with this mum. So children, how many of you have got a mum like that? Put your hands up. Oh, some hands up. Some of you are saying no, all right. 
So I shan't embarrass the mum, so asking them, are you like that? Do you resemble her? Now today we're going to learn about the Bible's mum. And uh, we're going to have uh, Pastor King Ling, who is a mum, a grandmum, to read a passage for us. So if you have Bibles with you, you may want to turn to Proverbs 31, verse 10 to, 20, to uh, 21. You can click it in or turn to your Bible. Verses 10 to 31. A wife of noble character, who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand, she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praised her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. Here in this passage, we have an ode to the competent wife, because this passage in verse 10 says, a wife of noble character who can find. Then later on, this woman do noble things, but uh, this lady surpasses everyone else. So it's an ode to an able wife. It's also a tribute to a mother, because in verse 28, her children arise, and her husband bless her and praises her. So this is the picture of a wonderful mother. Now, in our homes, we can liken our family, our home, to a palace. And in every palace, there's a king, there's a queen. And the wife is the queen, the queen of the home. I have here a packet of cards. And um, I have, in every card, four queens. The queen of spades, diamonds, clubs, and the queen of hearts. That's right, the queen of hearts. And I want to suggest to you that every mum is a queen. And instead of playing one role, she plays the four roles of these four queens. So mum is the queen. And that's our theme and title for today. First of all, mother is the queen of diamonds the queen of diamonds. In verse 10, we read, a wife of noble character who can find, 
she is worth far more than rubies or jewels. And in the message translation, she's worth far more than diamonds. Diamonds are very, very expensive and precious stones. And so the wife, the mother, is compared to the queen of diamonds. She's invaluable. You can't count her true worth. Now, I've been to parties where when I ask someone, what do you do? They say, oh, I'm only a homemaker, a housewife, or I'm just a simple mother. The idea is I'm not as good as the lady who works as a lawyer, as a banker, or as a doctor. I'm just an ordinary mother. Mum, do you know how much you're worth? According to the British economist, the mother who looks after one or two children is worth a salary. She can earn a salary for that job of £3,000 per month. So now, mums, you can send your invoice to your husband and make sure that he settles that account. But even that £36,000 per annum is, is not uh, something magnificent, it's nothing compared to your true nature and true, your true worth. Because here in Proverbs 31, this woman adds value. This is not value-added tax, not VAT, but it's an added value first to her husband. Because if you read verse 11, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. In other words, she enriches the husband, he becomes so valuable, and she adds value to her husband. And then if you look at verse um, 23, her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. So because of his, her backing and support and the way that she infuses value in him, he is a noble counsellor. He's an elder at the gates and people look up to him. And we know that behind every great man, there is a great wife. So here is a woman who added value to her husband, to her home, and then for herself too, because she displays value in her own self. In uh, verse um, 22, she makes covering for her bed. She herself is clothed in fine linen and purple. Linen and purple, the color purple, are the most expensive clothes in Old Testament times. So she was clothed in a very dignified and regal manner. Not only that, not only did she have wonderful clothes, not only was she not dull and drab and shoddy, she was someone in verse 25 who is clothed with strength and dignity and she can laugh at the days to come. Wow, look at her character, clothed with strength. She's firm, she's strong, she builds a house on a rock and she is also dignified. People look up to her, they want her company, and she adds value to their lives whenever they interact with her. So mother is the queen of diamonds, the queen of diamonds. President Lincoln, whose statue graces Parliament Square, once said, all I am and hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. All I am, all I hope to be, I owe to my angel mother. Indeed, mum, you are the queen of diamonds. Secondly, mother is the queen of spades. The queen of spades. Now, the spade is an instrument, a tool. It's a symbol of hard work, of untiring labor. And how does this mother work? And in Proverbs chapter 31, we read that she works with tremendous enthusiasm and energy, verse 17. She sets about her work vigorously. Wow, vigorously. One of my wife's favorite quotes is, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. She does that. And so do many, many mothers. You work with enthusiasm. You work with all your energy and might. Her arms are strong for her tasks. And then I'd like you to look at her job description. Wow, she can do multitasking. She's not just a one 
gift, one talent mother, but she can do a variety of things. So will you look at the passage and see what she could do? Verse 13, she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's a tailor. She's like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it's still dark and provides food for her family, portions for her maids or servant girls. She's the caterer. She's able to find good food and provide a tremendous, varied diet for her whole family. Then look at verse 16. She considers a field. Wow, she knows lots about real estate and she buys it. And out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. What was the best investment in her day? A vineyard with grapes and wine, chardonnay, champagne, while well, she was doing all these things. Then in verse 18, she sees that her trading is profitable and her lamb does not go out. So she's also a trader, a merchant, and she always makes a profit. Her books are always in the black. And she's someone that you can trust to invest in, with, and through. Her trading is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She works all hours. She's uh, productive. She does not mind uh, overtime and overwork. Verse 19, in her hand, she holds a distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She was able to uh, run uh, kind of almost like a factory where people could uh, sew and manufacture things. Verse 21, when it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. Her children are impeccably and well-dressed. She makes covering for her bed, and she's clothed with fine linen and purple. And then, not only that, verse 24, she sells linen garments. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. And then in verse 14, she's like the merchant ships who bring food from afar. She imports, exports. She works in all kinds of skills, especially in producing fantastic clothes. She's a fashion designer. She's also someone who can sell these things at a great profit. So here is this woman. She is the queen of spades. Now, some of you might say, I'm not like that. No way can I measure up to this woman that you're talking about in Proverbs 31. Well, mom, think carefully. What do you do all day when your children are at home or at school? You've got to plan the menu. You've got to feed them. You've got to see to their homework. And you have to take them to school. You are the transport officer. And then you're the one who controls what computer games they can play, what TV programs they can watch. And you also have to make sure that their needs are attended to. I want new football boots. I need a new dress. I want to go and watch this show. I want to go to uh, this particular event. And you have to juggle and try to balance your family diet. That's hard work. And again, you have to do the washing, the cleaning, the laundering. Wow! Without charge. And you have to do all these things. You have to balance your time looking after children. And when they are sick, Oh dear, you could spend hours with them. So, mother, you're a queen, the queen of spades. And we salute you as the queen of spades. So, why don't we, children and everyone alike, let's really give a hand to our mothers. They are queen of spades. They work exceedingly hard for us. Thank God for mums. Thank God that she's a queen of spades. And then the third thing about the mother She's the queen of clubs. The queen of clubs. Now, a club is not a weapon that you use to whack somebody, like a cave woman hitting her poor husband, making sure he doesn't go away hunting after other women. It's not like that, because the club can also be a weapon, an instrument of discipline and correction. And so here it speaks of the woman as the queen of spades and um, oh, it's the queen of clubs. And so what does this mean? Now, all of us, especially children, are growing up in a world of all kinds of distraction, peer pressure. 
They face subtle temptations to rebel and to reject what's true, what's good, and what's noble. And I want you for a moment to imagine a queen without clubs. In other words, an irresponsible queen. A queen that does not exercise discipline in her home. What will happen? Well, mums and children, listen very carefully, and fathers too. Can you imagine a responsible mum saying the following to their kids? Son, you are sitting too far from the TV set. Get closer. Two feet away from the screen is ideal. You ever heard that? Oh, you don't like the veggies. Just give them to the dogs. You're leaving your light on? That's fine. Let the house be cheery with full lights on. Heard a mum say that? And then the child comes back with a swear word that he picked up from the playground. And mum says, hey, Johnny, why do you say that? He says, Rohan does it at school. And mum says, well, and, and Rohan's mum doesn't mind. She agrees to that. And you say, well, that's okay. If Roman, Rohan's mum agrees, I agree too. Swear as much as you like. And then mum sees uh, Tom coming back, smells his uh, jersey, sports jersey. He said, hmm, it's only a week old. Smells good, can last another week. <laughs> and then you see your child with a running nose. And uh, you couldn't find any tissue in the house. You say, okay, darling, I don't have a tissue. Just wipe your nose with your sleeve. Now, this is unthinkable, isn't it? No responsible mums would do that because mothers seek to instill hygiene, healthy habits, and uh, good approach and mannerisms, manners in life. So mum is really the queen of clubs and she seeks to develop good habits in the children. When a mother disciplines a child, she sets important boundary lines because every child needs to know how far he or she can go. And the mother who just abdicates, abstains from disciplining a child will breed and bring up a rebel, a vagrant. In fact, someone who will become a yob, who does terrible things when he grows up as a teenager. So, mum has to be a queen, the queen of clubs. The mother disciplines together with dad. I remember once talking to a, a man. He says, you know, I don't like to discipline my children. I said, why? He said, well, if I threaten or cane or discipline my son, then we can't play together. I want my wife to do it. Mother should be disciplining them. Then she, he can hate the mother and he will like me. Oh dear, I said, what kind of father is this? Because in our house, mom and dad discipline the children together. And none of our three sons could ever say, Mum has a softer heart, and they would go to uh, see her meeting out discipline when they're in trouble. No, because they know that dad agrees with mum, and mum agrees with dad. And again, although discipline is very important, it must be done in private. I've seen many a mother yelling at a child, you clumsy oaf, fancy spilling milk all on the table. And you, why don't you take the rubbish out? Why don't you kick the cat? and then yell at the top of her voice, and maybe even smacks a child behind the ears, that's bad. You never discipline your child in public. It's always in private. And sometimes even you have to apply the table tennis or ping pong paddle to give them a good spanking. You never say, I'm disgusted at you. You deserve to be whacked even harder. That's horrible. You will breed a violent child, a violent lad, what do you do? When we discipline our children, yes we do, it's always to show them their error and then always, always hugging them, embracing them, loving them when they realize what they did was wrong so that they can grow up in a way that's pleasing uh, to the Lord. So mom has to do that. How does she do it? And the writer tells us in verse 26, the mother, the wife, speaks with wisdom. 
and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Consistently, faithfully, she teaches the child the way of righteousness and gives to the child true, wholesome values. Verse 27, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. So she runs a house, she manages a house, but she's the one that ensures that there is value being inculcated in every child that lives in the house. So mum is the queen of clubs. Then finally, mum is the queen of, queen of hearts. Now we have to be careful because if you read Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland, you know his queen of hearts is a horrible woman. She would swear, and when she loses her temper, she would say to the courtier, off with his head, off with her head. Now, we are not that kind of queen of hearts because the heart speaks of warmth, of love, and of compassion. So this mother in Proverbs 31 is portrayed as someone who is caring and compassionate. Verse 20, she opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. She saw the need of others and she did what she could to help them. She was a practical, caring, generous woman and she did all those things and her children picked up those things. My wife, myself too, we are hospitable people and we see now in our three sons when we go to their homes, they entertain, they are people in their homes, they learn to be hospitable and we need to do that to show compassion to those who may be alone feeling marginalized and left out, we should be extending care and compassion to these people. We don't just dismiss single moms. We love them. We welcome them to our homes. We share with them the loads that they have to bear with the children that they're seeking to bring up. So here is a woman with heart, the queen of hearts, showing kindness and compassion. Then I want to just um, leave Proverbs 31 for a moment to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Because there, Paul compares himself and his uh, mission team, his apostolic team, to the role of a mother. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, there's this delightful verse. He tells the Christians in Thessalonica, we loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear to us. There are some Christian mothers. Maybe in our church today, you may be like one of these mothers. You know the gospel, and you try to ram the gospel into the throat of your children. You want to make them uh, say the sinner's prayer, do this or do that. Well, up to a point is good, but that's not what this woman does. Because the mother that Paul thinks of says, look, we not only share the gospel with you, we share our very lives, our whole being. In other words, the mother who expresses love that says, I'm all for you. All that I have, I want to pass on to you. All the good values that God has given me through the study of his word, I want to share with you. I want these to become real in your lives. I give myself. I'm willing to sacrifice everything. Some of you may not know that Pastor King Ling uh, has a doctorate from London University. And um, she could have easily continued a career in academics. But she decided that she wanted to be the mother to care for our three children. In those days, I had to travel across the whole world preaching, speaking to university students. But she made a decision, and a very wise one, for which her sons thank her, and one of them is here today. And it is that I will not abandon my calling as a mother. I'm going to invest in them. I'm going to share my time, my energy, myself with them. And she did that, and no wonder all three sons bless her and praises her. So we need to do that. It's not giving doses of Christianity or religion to our children, but to share our authentic, our real lives in Christ with the ones that we love. It has to be demonstrated, not in any sentimental or even religious way, but in loving care and wholesome sacrifices. 
So let's uh, summarize. Let's conclude. One mother, four different roles. Mum is first of all the queen, the queen of diamonds. She is invaluable and she adds value to her children and to others, the queen of diamonds. And then she's also the queen of spades. She works hard, exceedingly hard. Now I see today in our congregation, we have two professors from Hong Kong University. Welcome. She may not have an MBA from Hong Kong University or from Manchester or from Harvard, but with God's grace and God's wisdom, she can run and manage her household and bring joy to God and also to those that she lives with and serves in the family. She is the queen of spades. And then she's also the queen of clubs. She's not only just somebody who loves, and she's all heart, as it were. She also knows what it means to be tough, to be firm, to exercise discipline proportionately. Discipline with love. She is the queen of clubs. And then finally, because she receives God's love, because the Holy Spirit pours God's love in her heart, she's able to love not only those in the family, those outside, but those that God has given to her, she would make herself totally available for them. She is the queen of hearts. Now, how do we conclude? This way, God wants us to know the secret of being a mother. And thankfully, in Proverbs 31, we have the uh, secret. So if you look carefully at... Um, Verse 30, you will note these words. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting, but the woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Can we all say together? The woman who fears the Lord. So what is the secret? The woman who? Oh, you're not very sure. The woman who? Fears the Lord. And this is the secret. In other words, she puts God first in her life, the family, the husband that God has entrusted to her. She wants to serve God in such a way that they will be given value. They will also bring joy and glory to God. And also, uh, she would revere him always. She's accountable to him. She can't do things as she liked. She cannot misbehave or do things that are not appropriate for her as a wife or as a mother. She is accountable to God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And she treasures that. She, she um, fears the Lord. And as a result, her children, her husband, what do they do? They bless and they praise her. Now, the national anthem of Britain is God save the Queen, right? Now today, I want the easy anthem to be to our, all our mothers who are queens. One mother, but four roles. Queen of diamonds, spades, clubs, and heart. We want to say, God bless our queen. Anybody says amen to that? Amen. amen. God bless our queens. And we want to bless them. Now, this is very important because you know that uh, one of the things I love to do is to get people to bless one another. If you start criticizing your wife, trying to show out all her bad points, you're always late. You never... Uh, keep the house tidy. You never really uh, send the children to school on time. If you're always nagging and scolding, your wife will never develop. You make her a hag or a nag, and, and, and that's not the way. But when you start praising her, encouraging her, and saying, how can I bring God's best into her life and seek to raise her up and to uh, build her up, the best way, husbands, fathers, children, is encouraging. It's saying thank you, thank you. Now I hope those of you who are here who have mums here today, after I end my sermon, and when we sing a song, I'd like you to go up to bless your mum, all right? To say thank you, mum, for being so wonderful to me. I really want to, to encourage you, cheer you, to be the mum that God wants you to be. And husband to say thank you for being such a wonderful wife. We're not going to sing a song, a hymn, which I've grown to like, this was introduced to us by the youth some uh, Sundays ago. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. 
And in the second verse, there's a very lovely, lovely uh, verse that says, Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. I'm writing a book at the moment, and the title of that book is Ever Blessing, Ever Blessed. And I think this is a secret. that When we know we are blessed by God, as a mother, as a wife, as a child, as a husband, what do we do? We keep on blessing other people. And then some of you might say, look, I feel so inadequate. Compared to what you have been expounding today, I'm a horrible mother. I feel so shameful. Don't do that. Because God is a God of grace. He wants to live us up. He doesn't want us to leave this uh, auditorium or church condemned and in depression. No. And for those of you who really want a fresh touch from the Lord, you say, yes, Lord, I want to receive your grace and blessing. I want you to help me. This is not magic, but it's like a sign of um, dependence, a humble expression to say, God, I can't do it alone, but you can assist me, you can help me. So as we sing this hymn, those of you who are mothers, with all your responsibilities, all your cares, all your challenges, all your struggles, as well as your joys, if you want to come up to be blessed, now we will not pray long prayers over you. I'm going to ask Pastor Peter, and Solan, Solan, where are you? Solan here? Yes, will you come up now? And Pastor Kingling as well. And those of you who really want God to bless you, God has blessed Pastor Peter and Solan. They're wonderful, godly people. God has blessed me and my wife. We want to, as it were, impart God's blessing that you can be a queen that God wants you to be all these things that we were praying. So we won't pray long prayers over you. We just lay our hands on you to bless you. And now let's sing together and let's all stand to sing this hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And when we have finished singing, I want us to bless one another. Bless especially those who are mothers. But in the meantime, those who want to receive a blessing, a Mother's Day blessing, we invite you to come to the front.
Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. We give it all to you. Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. You are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one who sends lift us from the grave. You are the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sins away. Cause you are the one who saves You are the one who saves You are the one who sends Lift us from the grave You are the light of life The everlasting day You are the one who saves All our sins away Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. Give it up to you. Jesus, you are my rescue. Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. You are the one who saves. You are the one who saves. You are the one whose hands lift us from the grave. You are the light. Everlasting day, you are the one who takes all our sins away. You are the one who saves, you are the one who saves, you are the one who sends, lifts us from the grave. Cause you are the light of life, the everlasting day. You are the one who takes all our sins away.
lift us from the grave Cause you are the light of life The everlasting day You are the one who takes all our sins away Cause you are the one who saves You are the one who saves You are the one who saves Lift us from the grave You are the light of life everlasting day you are the one who takes all our sins away Jesus you are my rescue Jesus you are my rescue I give you everything I am Jesus you are my Jesus, you are my rescue. I give you everything I am. Let's give the Lord a thank offering. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I want to decree, I want to declare that those who came up for the blessing, those blessings you will have and overflowing. Amen. And God will use you as godly mothers and He will be delighted with you and pleased with you. But pray for one another, strengthen one another as you continue in your walk with the Lord. So let's just, uh, we won't have any official uh, benediction as it were, but turn around and bless each other, especially the mums, and then go and have lunch with God's joy, with God's blessing and peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.